Micah 5 verse 2 KJV But thou, Bethlehem Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from old, from everlasting. In the King James Version it reads, whose goings forth have been from old, from everlasting. Meanwhile, in the New Versions it reads, whose coming forth is from old, from ancient days, or from distant past. Uh Uh-oh, looks like Jesus had a beginning, at least in the New Versions. If someone was to argue for this reading, this would be a contradiction, according to 1 Timothy 6, verse 16, where it reads that Jesus is the only one who hath immortality. Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh, and that makes him without beginning or end, everlasting. Meanwhile, from ancient days shows Jesus is from an ancient point in history. Sounds like another Jesus, according to 2 Corinthians 11, verse 4. Matthew 6, verse 1, KJV. Take heed that ye do not your alms before men, to be seen of them. Otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. In the King James Version it reads, Take heed that ye do not your alms before men, to be seen of them. Meanwhile, in the new versions it reads, Practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. Matthew 5 verse 16 says, Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Alms are charitable donations, typically with money or food given. Righteousness comes with standing for causes or that which is right. If you are to not practice your righteousness before men, then you are by default unrighteous. Therefore, the new versions show themselves once again to be confusing. Matthew 12, verse 40, KJV. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. In the King James Version it reads, whale's belly. Meanwhile, in the New Versions it reads, great fish or sea monster. The passage in which Jesus prophesies his death and resurrection is made ambiguous with the phrase sea monster. What sea monster could Jesus be referring to? Sounds pretty cheesy to be throwing around words like sea monster, and what does that do for those who are reading or listening? Do they allow themselves to imagine a random sea monster like the Kraken, Loch Ness Monster, or the creature from the Black Lagoon? There have been modern examples of men being swallowed by whales and living to tell the tale. Let's watch this clip here. Did it really happen? Questions are being raised about the real-life Jonah. The guy who claims he was swallowed by a whale. I just was in there struggling, banging. Michael Packard was lobster diving in Cape Cod on Friday when he says the humpback whale sucked him right into his mouth before spitting him out after 30 seconds. He was just going along and I just happened to be in the wrong place. 
at the wrong time. He had no soft tissue damage and no broken bones. But this 54-year-old scuba diver says he totally believes the story. I believe it uh, fully. It, it is possible. Why? Because Reiner Schimpf had an almost identical experience back two years ago and has the photos to prove it. That's his body sticking out of the mouth of a whale who'd swallowed him off the coast of South Africa when he was filming footage of the sardine run. Without the picture, it's very difficult to prove that you've actually been inside. Whale swallowing humans is exceedingly rare. The odds it will happen are one in a trillion, according to one expert. It's not illogical to believe in the literal story of Jonah, just like it is not illogical to believe that Jesus rose from the dead. Matthew 19, verse 16. KJV, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? In the King James Version it reads, Good master. Meanwhile, in the New Versions it reads, Teacher. In the next verse it reads, And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is, God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. If the new versions are correct, the rich young ruler should be looking at Jesus as if he's crazy, because he clearly does not call him good in this verse. The KJV is logical. While the new versions make no sense once again. Matthew 26, verse 28. KJV. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. In the King James Version, it reads, The New Testament. Meanwhile, in the New Versions, it reads, The Covenant. Hebrews 9 verse 16 says, For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. Not every covenant requires the death of the one making it. If this is the new covenant that was promised to Israel, this would negate the physical promises to the seed of Abraham and the land that belongs to them while also throwing us into a post-millennial world where Christ doesn't physically reign as Messiah. This same change can be found in nearly every instance where Testament appears. References found below. Mark 1 verse 2 KJV As it is written in the Prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. In the King James Version it reads, Written in the Prophets. Meanwhile, in the New Versions it reads, Written in Isaiah the Prophet. Maybe if the scribes and Pharisees spent more time reading their Bibles, they would know that Malachi 3 verse 1 is not Isaiah the prophet. Verse 3 is Isaiah, but verse 2 is the last book of the Old Testament. You wouldn't have been able to find the passage concerning John the Baptist anywhere in Isaiah. This new version rendering is an error. Luke 2 verse 14 KJV Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. In the King James Version it reads, Good will toward men. Meanwhile, in the New Versions it reads, Among those with whom he is pleased or among those whom he favors. In the authorized version, you have God extending a metaphorical olive branch to mankind, knowing that we are sinners and yet coming to save sinners. Matthew 9 verse 13. 
In the new versions, you have God looking for morally outstanding people, forgetting the entire purpose for why his son is coming to the world in the first place. Romans 3 alone completely abolishes this pathetic rendering of this verse, as there is none righteous, no, not one. John 1 verse 18, KJV, No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. In the King James Version, it reads, The only begotten Son. Meanwhile, in the New Versions, it reads, The only begotten God, or God the only Son, or the only born God. Count how many gods you have in these New Versions. You've got a begotten God, and you've got an unbegotten God. So much for passages like Isaiah 44, verse 6. This goes along quite nicely with the Catholic tradition, where it says that Mary is the mother of God, teaching that God was born, elevating Mary's status as a Semiramis figure and Jesus as a Tammuz figure according to true Babylonian religion. Mary is the mother of Jesus, but God was manifest in the flesh, 1 Timothy 3.16, and formed the body in the womb in which he dwelt in. Mary is not the mother of God, just the mother of the body God dwelt in. John 6, verse 33, KJV. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven, and giveth life unto the world. In the King James Version it reads, he. Meanwhile, the new versions read, that. That bread of God which cometh down from heaven is Jesus Christ. To get rid of the word he and to exchange the word to that removes the person of Jesus from the context. Perhaps the that in these new versions is the host within communion of Catholic masses. I think that is exactly what this is supposed to imply. See how it's in the Jesuit 16. 10 Dewey Rames version. This is not a new rendering. John 10 verses 14 to 15. KJV. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. In the King James Version it reads, And know my sheep, and am known of mine. Meanwhile, the new versions read, I know my own, and my own know me. Jesus is the good shepherd, and everyone else that belongs to him are his sheep. To call us sheep puts us in our rightful place, subordinate. To say, mine own know me, eliminates the main context of sheep, and could even allow for the interpretation that there are other shepherds, such as pastors, priests, bishops, popes, etc. Pastor is not a title for an elder and the priesthood of the believer is a biblical doctrine. If you want to see more differences, subscribe to this channel or go to Gumroad and download List. 
Also on Gumroad is a KJV vs. New Tract, along with other tracts and content you can download and print. All monetary contributions are appreciated. Thank you for watching this segment and hope this has been to your edification.